So when this happens, realize that this is the one. People that realize it initially or the first batch that go towards him is from our lands, from Khurasan. The black flags will rise from the areas of Afghanistan. And this is part of the beliefs of the Ahlu Sunnah that a person will come who will be from the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Rasul says, Al Mahdi min Itrati min Waladi Fatima. The Mahdi is from my lineage, as in from my progeny, from the children of Fatima. And then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, His name will be my name. So his name will be Muhammad. And his father's name will be my father's name. So he will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah. A lot of the scholars agree that the first of the major signs will be the Mahdi. Who is Al-Mahdi? Al-Mahdi means in English, the awaited one and the anointed one. So the chosen awaited one. As the earth was filled with wrong and oppression, he will fill it with justice and peace. Ali radiallahu anhu says, يُصْلِحُهُ اللَّهُ فِي لَيْلَةً Allah Rabbul Izzah will prepare him for the office of leadership in one night. So the Mahdi doesn't know he is the Mahdi. And the Mahdi doesn't have the competencies of the Mahdi. Until one night. In one night Allah will transform him. And he resembles the Prophet Sallallahu not in his physical form, but in his character. Allah said about the Prophet Muhammad وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You, O Muhammad, are on an amazing character. This is Allah witnessing to this. This man, Al-Mahdi, will be, and he said, he will rule and lead the Muslims until he transforms the world. The Ahadith mention that a king will die in the Jazeera, in the Arab Peninsula, and the sons or three sons of a king will fight and quarrel over leadership. And to avoid this quarrel, this man, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, will leave Medina in secret and go to Mecca. Because he doesn't want to be involved in the conflict, nor does he want people to turn towards him. So when he goes to Mecca, his aim is to avoid getting tangled up in this leadership struggle. Yet people follow him from Medina into Mecca. And they find him and they take him out. And they bring him to the Kaaba. And there, between this, the Rukn, as in Hajr al-Aswad, and Maqam Ibrahim, they will make bay'ah to him when he doesn't want it. Al-Mahdi, as in Sahih Muslim, you find this hadith, he will come out he will appear in Mecca and the scholars will identify him with the descriptions that the Prophet Sallallahu placed about him. There are certain features about him. Wide forehead, big, big sharp eyes, a thin nose which is slightly hooked on the top, Al-Mahdi. They know his other signs so that no one can think Al-Mahdi is someone else. He has particular signs. They are all authentic narrations from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You'll find them in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And as soon as they have pledged allegiance, two things will happen. Number one, an army will march out from Syria to attack this progeny of the Rasul. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen carefully, is in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And he is asleep. And in his sleep, he starts to move. He looks uncomfortable. He's displaying what he's never displayed before discomfort and sleep to the extent that he's moving. Then he got up. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have seen you do what you normally do not do. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, strange is the situation. An army will come from, the, from Syria intending the house of Allah from my ummah seeking a man from my progeny to attack him. And in another hadith, an army will come campaigning towards the Kaaba until it reached the Bayda. And Bayda is an expanse of land between Mecca and Medina, a flat desert land. When it reaches there, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, يَخْصَفُ بِأَوَّلِهِمْ وَآخَرِهِمْ The earth will suck them in their first and their last. So this is 
one of the signs that this one is the one the Prophet ﷺ intended. First, that his name will be my name. Second, an army will come to attack him. And he will be an arm. And the army will be destroyed by Allah alone. So when this happens, realize that this is the one. The flags will come towards him. And they will traverse through the land until they come in help of the Mahdi. And his time is a difficult era. The Rasul says it in an eloquence befitting the majesty of the Rasul. Listen carefully, Muslims. تَخْزُونَ جَزِيرَةَ الْعَرَبِ فَيَفْتَحُهَا اللَّهِ You will campaign in the Arab Peninsula and Allah will open it. ثُمَّ تَخْزُونَ الْفَارْسِ Then there will be a campaign against the Persians. فَيَفْتَحُهَا اللَّهِ And Allah will open it. ثُمَّ تَخْزُونَ الْرُومِ Then there will be a campaign against Rome. And Allah will open it. ثُمَّ تَخْزُونَ الدَّجَّالِ فَيَفْتَحُهُ اللَّهِ Then the Dajjal will come and Allah will open it as in will let you conquer it. So the age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. And the Hadith says he will stay with you for seven years and maybe eight. And if it really extends nine years. يَمْلَأُهَا عَدْلًا كَمَا مُلِئَ الظُّلْمًا وَجُورًا He will fill it with justice and peace as it was filled with injustice and tyranny. Al-Mahdi, with his knowledge and with his ability, will change this state of the whole world from injustice to justice, from tyranny to peace, just as it was filled the other way. So every, the balances will be returned with the coming of the Mahdi, alayhi salam. At the last campaign, the Muslims will come and the other side, its opposition will come to face it. And the opposition is so huge, 80 banners, 80 different flags. Under each flag, 12,000 men. And when the two sides meet, and the Muslims see this, a third of them will run away. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. Because running away reduces and destroys the morale of everyone standing. So then the campaign starts, and the battle is hot in its intense. And a third of the Muslims will die. Just a third will be victorious. And they will be there on the battlefield collecting the remnants and the booty of war. And the hadith says, from one tribe, 99 have died and one person is left. So what joy will he have at victory and what joy will he have at collecting booty? So you would think after such a calamity, after such a colossal engagement, or what is referred to in the books that preceded us as Armageddon, you would have expected issues to become more relaxed. Yet, as they have just become victorious and are collecting the things of the battlefield, a voice will come out to them that, O oh Muslim, the Dajjal has come in your lands. And the first of the Alamatul Kubra, the first of the major signs, is the advent of the Dajjal or the Antichrist. So the Imam Al-Mahdi will send 10 people, 10 riders to go and investigate and scout, see if the news is correct. And the Rasul says, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu I know their names and I know the names of their fathers and I know the color of their horses. They will be the best riders of the day. So they will go and see, Ah, the calamity has come. The Dajjal has come. Who is this Dajjal? The first of the big signs of Qiyamah. And understand, when the signs, the major signs are unleashed, they will follow each other like beads on a necklace. 